I'm hacking my nervous system so I can feel this metal cube, even though it's not real. This harness can actually transmit a sense of touch. It actually talks directly to your nerves using small electrical signals. Why do this? You see something in front of you when you try to grab it and it's not there, you realize it's just a virtual world. What we're trying to do is bring that reality, bring that connection where if it's a keyboard, when I press a key, I feel it. You can feel it. You target like this and then you grab it and it hits your hand. All right, what the f is happening right now? Those are real experiences, but there's nothing there. What you're interacting with is digital. It is not a physical interaction. I just want to note for the record, perfect score. Every time, every time. What we've done at Afferents is we create an interface between the digital realm and your nervous system. Another way of saying this is that we're skipping the skin. Just try this. Click the like, subscribe, and alert button below this video to see if you get any haptic feedback. Laura, was that funny? No. Will this technology take the virtual out of virtual reality? Keep watching to see how it works and what it'll mean for you. This is Hard Reset. We came to Case Western Reserve University, which is a long name for a university. Anyway, we came here to meet this guy. I'm Jacob Siegel. I build uh, wearable devices that let you feel things that aren't there. That doesn't sound very easy to do. I bet you could use some help from a world-renowned expert in sensory neurophysiology and using electrical technology to excite and talk to the human nervous system. My name is Dustin Tyler. I'm one of the world's experts in sensory neurophysiology and using electrical technology to excite and talk to the human nervous system. Well, okay then. Jacob and Dustin are the co-founders of Afferents. They're developing a new technology that allows us to transmit sensations directly into our nervous system. But this actually grew out of their expertise in making prosthetics. My career has been what we call neural engineering. And that's been building devices to connect to the central nervous system. So the nerves in the arms and legs or the brain directly. One of the people we've worked with, we're able to even get her to walk down the aisle to her wedding. Those kind of things were really meaningful because you realize that technology has the capability to impact somebody's life in a meaningful way. The sense of touch is, I would say, underappreciated part of our lived experience. As someone loses a limb, they've lost functional capabilities. But what's more meaningful is the emotional or psychological effects of losing a limb and having a sense of wholeness. And a sense of wholeness comes from the sensory information that your brain is getting about yourself and what you can do with your body. And so that's where the sense of touch is remarkably meaningful. We are giving information to the brain that you have never felt before. This research into how prosthetics can link up to our nervous system is part of what makes this new technology possible. The nerves under our skin are like little transmission lines for the signals from our body to our brain. If we can tap into those transmissions, we could send a signal that tells the brain our finger is pressing on something or touching something. Most haptic systems you've probably experienced are using little vibrating motors. This is a pretty crude way to imitate the way we experience tactile sensations. Not only are those motors kind of bad at replicating touch, they're also bulky and expensive. All the haptic experiences you've had so far, whether that was with a mouse and a keyboard or a cell phone, have used your skin to create that information that goes up to your brain. Whereas at Afferents, we can skip the skin and send information directly to the brain through our neural interfaces. So the way that our hands normally work is you have 17,000 little sensors in your skin, right? So the skin picks up all these interactions we have with the environment. All those run to a bunch of wires that come down through your finger, up through your hand, all the way up to your spinal cord. So the brain gets, as I touch a finger, there's a bunch of impulses that run along this wire. It's just like a telephone cable at that point. The information's from the fingertip. Everything else is transmission. Our technology allows us to put information into that wire. So if it's not created in the fingertip, I can fake it, put that same information on the wire. The brain didn't know it didn't come from the fingertip. So by creating that information, your brain says, oh, that was my, my finger. I felt my finger touch something. It didn't, but I give it the same information and the brain didn't know it was any different. 
Right now, this tech can allow users to experience basic sensations, but over time, it'll be able to do far more. They're currently researching and building a library of how to send different signals for different sensations. So what's it like to virtually touch something? I got to dive in and try out the Afrin's Phantom Harness, which is kind of like a cool future glove. It leaves your fingertips exposed so you don't lose much dexterity. So this we call the Phantom, is the overall product area, but the idea is this is our, our control unit. Mm -hmm. And so this is taking information via Bluetooth from the headset or whatever device, and we convert that into the neural code, if you will, mm -hmm. of how we're going to stimulate. And then there's a wiring harness through here that goes down to each of the fingers. We have multiple contacts. Right. The idea on this is um, from all the sensors in your finger here where you can feel that, your skin picks it up, but that signal is sent along nerves that head here and up to your brain. So we're interacting with those at this point, the base of the finger, so we can take this neural code from the controller, apply it here, the activation happens in that nerve here, but it came from here, from your brain's perspective. Right. We often think of touch as the part where I feel my finger. But the interesting part about this is that information that comes from our hands, that comes from our sensory system, when it heads into the brain, it goes all over the brain, not just the part that physically feels it. But when you are pushing a key, for example, your brain has already processed that like tens of seconds ahead of when you actually feel it. So I might be able to see that I push a key on a keyboard, but if I feel it, I can start moving to the next one before I actually even realize I've touched it. And so that sense of touch not only brings us the reality that it exists, but it also allows us to interact with it much more effectively and efficiently than we can without touch. Okay, so I'm here in a room. I've got these pillars in front of me. I've got um, another one bites the dust sort of sporadically coming out of this speaker. I've got a glowing blue sphere, and I've got uh, a crackling fire right here. And each one sort of has its own sensation associated with it. As your hand moves away from the fire, right, it's, it, it dissipates, right? Yeah. Like you would expect? But I definitely feel all the tingle across my whole, all five of my fingers. You can feel the beat, right? We're playing music now through the speaker, and the beat of the music is is um, coming through both the audio as well as as well as through the phantom. We can see your head bobbing up and down. <laughs> Sorry, it's a great song. Great song. I have to admit, I was more than a little concerned that if I died in the game, I would die in real life. But I decided to go through with this simulation anyway. So I want to set expectations here. This is a technology in development. Currently, the sensations you experience with the harness are not the same as if you were holding a physical object, at least not yet. Right now, it mainly feels like a strong tingling, similar to the buzzing you might feel if your hand were to fall asleep. But even that feeling is enough to create feedback in your brain that makes it feel like an object is really there. As you touch something that is digitally represented, that means it's air. If you don't feel anything, it's hard to know when something occurs. Your brain is also confused because it's seeing an object, but it's not feeling it. We start to blur into this idea of what is reality, and the reality that we experience is just electrical information reaching our brain. Because the brain is in a black box, it's called your skull, and it doesn't see anything except the electrical information that it receives. Afferents isn't looking to have this available to consumers for at least a couple of years, but they are currently working with partners to integrate it into wearables like rings or watches that connect to spatial computing or other digital content. Once it's mature, this technology can take virtual experiences to a new level. It can give us a sense that we're really in these virtual environments. This might not seem like a huge deal, but think about how impactful it was to add synchronized sound to movies. Suddenly, a visual medium had a whole new dimension to speak through. So this could potentially be like that. And go ahead and try it with your finger as well. So you That's can right. pull. Oh yeah, closer. and when you touch it, it gives you like this immediate sensation. Like, ah! <laughs> Our sense of touch is extremely important to our perception of reality. We can see and hear things, but touching them is often what confirms to our brain that something is real. Once touch is integrated into virtual experiences, it could totally change how we relate to them. 
The future we're imagining is when we have heads-up displays. That means I don't need to be looking down at screens. I have glasses or headsets that are depicting information to me. It could be a map, it could be a text message, it could be a entertainment. And then I have a wearable. It's on my wrist, it's on my finger. And when I want to manipulate that content, I can do it and I can feel that interaction. The lived experiences can come through haptic information coming through these wearables. Chances are that most people will encounter this as a consumer device first. The AR and VR market is in its infancy, and new technologies like this will probably make their way into wearables you use at home. But this isn't just for things like gaming. So what will the future look like when this technology is fully mature? What will it mean when we can speak directly to our nervous system? What if you could fix a bad habit for $50? Like shaving with dull razor blades? Well, actually you can. Right now, Henson Shaving, our sponsor for this episode, is offering a 50-year supply of razor blades for $50. No subscription, just a one-time purchase that you never have to think about again. Then you'll always have a perfectly sharp blade on hand that shaves beautifully and protects your skin. I love my Henson Shaver. It is easily the best I've ever used, and it's the last one I ever plan to use. Henson is focused on the health of your skin. That's why they put so much time and precision into crafting their razors. Their background in aerospace manufacturing allows them to make razors with incredibly fine tolerances that grip and support the blades in a way that prevents skin irritation. Now, people use dull razors because replacement cartridges are expensive, and you're probably just trying to get the most out of it. If you've ever shaved with a dull blade, and research says 80% of you have engaged in this bad habit, you know how it brutalizes your skin. Henson wants to make it so you never need to worry about that again, because you'll always have a fresh blade on hand. Not just a better product, it's actual behavior change. To support our show and protect your skin, go to hensonshaving.com slash freethink. If you enter the code freethink at checkout, they'll also include a free bottle of shave cream. Okay, back to the show. Picture a scenario where this technology was ubiquitous and cheap. There's the obvious value of enriching digital interactions, entertainment, and 3D gaming. But virtual senses like this could allow us to do much more. We could operate robots remotely with a sense of touch even as we're manipulating objects far away. Or it could allow surgeons to experience a sense of touch as they operate tiny robotic manipulators. And bringing it full circle, it could open up new areas of research in the world of prosthetics, allowing people with limb differences to bond more fully with their prosthetics or completely change the way they use them. This is a potential leap forward for how we use media. There's a very simple answer for why we need this. In one word, it's connection. Touch is what connects us to each other and it connects us to the world around us. And if I can actually reach and feel something, it's real to me. The richest thing for me is to see and listen to one of our subjects from the limb loss talk about essentially emotion about holding his wife's hand. That's not what I thought we'd get into this for. As we build the tools to understand more, it's not just that tool, it's not just the ring we're gonna create, it's not the technology, but it's how people use it. It's how the painter paints with the brush. Right now, we can record our thoughts with the written word or what we hear and see with audio and video recordings. These innovations have had an incredible impact on civilization, each with its own unique character. Once we add our sense of touch to the tools of expression at our disposal, what will it mean for how we share the way we perceive and think about the world? What will it mean when people can literally step into our skin? Guys, like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash that like button. Wait, which, is the, which, is the, which is the audience? Is that the audience? That's the audience. Okay. You told me not to look at the camera earlier. You can't, you, you can't see them?